Hey, fellow authors, it's Carissa here from Author Revolution. Now this August, we're really excited to introduce our new quantum manifestation mind magic meditations and hypnoses designed to help you align with your highest potential. Inside your future self, which is Tammy and my monthly meditation and hypnosis membership for authors, you'll get access to these powerful programs along with our other themes like Money Muse, The Healthy Author, and New Beginnings. With 10 programs to keep you on track, there's something for every aspect of your writing journey. Join now and enjoy your first week absolutely free. Visit authorrevolution.org forward slash YFS to get started. Transform your writing and your life with quantum manifestation mind magic this August. Don't miss out. Welcome to the Author Revolution podcast, where change is not just embraced, it's celebrated. I'm Carissa Andrews, international best-selling author, indie author coach, and your navigator through the ever-evolving landscape of authorship. Are you ready to harness the power of your mind and the latest innovations in technology for your writing journey? If you're passionate about manifesting your dreams and pioneering new writing frontiers, then you're in the perfect place. Here, we merge the mystical woo of writing with the exciting advancements of the modern world. We dive into the realms of mindset, manifestation, and the transformative magic that occurs when you believe in the impossible. We also venture into the world of futuristic technologies and strategies, preparing you for the next chapter in your author career. Every week, we explore new ways to revolutionize your writing and publishing experience. From AI to breakthrough thinking, this podcast is your gateway to a world where creativity meets innovation. Whether you're penning your first novel or expanding your literary empire, whether you're a devotee of the pen or a digital storyteller, this podcast is where your author revolution gains momentum. So join me in this journey to continue growth and transformation. It's time to redefine what it means to be an author in today's dynamic world. This is the Author Revolution Podcast, and your author revolution starts now. Welcome back, authors. I am beyond excited for today's episode because I have an incredible guest joining me, Sherman Perryman, the founder of Militant Grind. Now, Sherman is not just a visionary. He's a man who's lived and breathed the principles he's going to be teaching us. With a background in social justice, personal development, and community building, Sherman created Militant Grind to empower individuals to develop a resilient mindset rooted in love and compassion. We dive deep into his journey from what sparked the creation of Militant Grind to the core principles and philosophy that drive this transformative platform. Plus, Sherman gives us a sneak peek into the books he's written, the ones he's still got on the horizon, and all the things, right? So this conversation is packed with inspiration and actionable insights, and you're not going to want to miss a single second of it. So let's get to it. Well, hi, Sherman. Welcome to the Author Revolution podcast. I'm really excited to bring you on to the show today to talk about all the things. But before we get started, can you tell my audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? Um, I'm Sherman Perryman. I'm the founder of Militant Grind, which is a mindset coaching program. Um, we have coaching. We also have uh, physical training. And I also am a host for the Militant Grind podcast as well. It's so cool. It is so cool. Yeah. Okay. So for my audience who doesn't know about the Militant Grind, can you introduce them to the philosophy and what inspired you to, to create this ethos? Um, the philosophy is all of us, uh, being, being the best versions of ourselves. I feel like that's like above all. And in order to do that, we need to be in control and harness our mind, body, and spirit. So, so the, all those three have to be intact in order for you to become whole. And, you know, sometimes people like get militant grind misconstrued. They think I was in the military or any, something like that. Like I actually wasn't at all ever, but I come from a military background as far as like how I was raised. My father was in the army, grandfather in the Navy. I have sure. a brother that's active duty, Sergeant first class right now. So if you can, as you can tell, like I come from a very militant structured background and I was trying to create a brand that mostly resonated with me and who I am at the core. And so I was just meditating, thinking like, what should I call it, et cetera? Who am I? And then the name Militant Grind popped up and it was just like a 
an unused name, you know, like militantgrind.com was available, you know, no one was really using it, you know, the internet, there's billions of people that have, you know, used the internet. So I was just like, what? There's a name and I could actually take it and it's there and nobody has ever used it. And it just seemed like it was just so simple, you know? So yeah, I, so I figured out that militantgrind.com was available. I was like, okay, cool. Snatched it. And it actually has been um, one of the best things that, you know, I've probably ever done because I started a lot of different businesses and, you know, I'm, a, I'm also a pretty popular person where I'm from and I've never received so much support for anything I've ever done besides this, you know, like so some of my friends will be like, you know, you tried this, you tried that, you know, you did all these different things, you know, just as an entrepreneur, but what you're doing now, that's, that's you, bro. Like, yeah, because yeah. it was like my passion was like helping people, um, you know, giving advice, mindset advice, trying to get people to see life in a different way. And I'll just do that for fun. You know, I'll Heck yes. type yeah. something up, put it on Facebook and, you know, see what people think. And a lot of people resonate with a lot of the stuff that I wrote and that I put up there. So I was like, let's just figure out a way to make money or make a living impacting people. And as well as doing something that I'm passionate about. So that's so cool. I love that. Well, my brain's like, okay, already a couple things. Number one, I love that you meditated and it came to you because I teach that sort of thing all the time where it's like, allow the thoughts to to kind of like come. And when you do that, you're in alignment with who you are, which obviously you were, right? Mm -hmm. You got the insight, the inspired action, if you will. And you took it off and running and did what you could. And it was like so easy because the next logical steps were there and it was ready to go. I love that. I also right. love having people shift their perception. And that's kind of my my favorite part about being in author revolution, where it's like allowing authors who want to kind of break the un break the conventional and go into the unconventional when it comes to their thinking, the way they use their author career, all the things. I love that. It, it just makes me happy as well. So it's so cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your book because from Grit to Greatness is the book, right? And you discuss right. the five pillars of the militant grind. So number one, I want to know like what inspired you to write the book? And number two, could you break down the pillars for us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a friend actually inspired me to write a book and uh, she was just like, you need something tangible that people could have, you know, do an ebook, et cetera. And I was just like, uh, you know, so I started writing it and the ebook version and she was like oh this is cool then i was like why would i write an ebook when i could actually like write a real book and i had a friend that actually uh you know published a book and so he you know gave me the information on how to do it etc and how i can make it happen i actually interviewed him on my podcast so okay. interviewing people on my podcast has like changed my life drastically because i have like a, a connection that i'll be able to benefit from so if i would have never had the podcast it probably would have never happened you know so oh. um you know and some and also some fellow authors and things like that gave me some advice how i should structure it how i should write it you know start with the outline you know writing like it's no tomorrow and then after a while you go ahead and you read it and you be like oh this is crap but then you just do it again <laughs> you know what i mean so <laughs> that actually that's when the editing begins lot. yes <laughs> oh my god it was like you know like say after you write it you putting your all into it then you read it after a couple of days you'd be like what the hell was i thinking you know <laughs> Yeah, that, happened. <laughs> that oh, happens sorry. often, so that happened. very frequent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens so many times. And um, yeah, so I was like, OK, what really resonates with me when it comes to the five pillars? You know, because they were like, yeah, you should do like five pillars. And I was like, OK. And then I thought love, honor, strength, discipline and wisdom. Right. And so I'm like, all of those are like the top things that resonate with me. And I feel like if you have all of those, you should be pretty much solid throughout your life. You know, like nothing should be able to break you if you have love, honor, strength, discipline, and wisdom. Like you could go and that could almost be all that you need as a foundation, you know? And so with love, I feel like love is is first and love is very important. And it's also overshined as far as like how Western society looks at love. It's like love is in everything. Love is everywhere. Love is not just, hey, I want to date you and make love to you. And, you know, like, yeah. no, love could be your neighbor. You know, how you doing? Hey, are you OK today? They're showing love and love is expressed in many different forms, many different ways. And it's not just, you know, sexual or intimacy or physical intimacy, like, you know, what we try to portray. And 
it's funny because I talked about that this past weekend. I was like, man, I was in, I'll talk to actually a, a gay associate of mine, right? So it was a gay man. And we were just talking about, you know, the way the world is. And I was just like, man, I went to Dubai, which is a Middle Eastern Muslim country, not gay at all whatsoever, right? Mm -hmm. And a man had grabbed my hand and held my hand and we were walking together, you Okay. know? And so, Wow. And you're like, why not? <laughs> Let's go. yeah, you know, because I'm like, I know he wasn't trying to, you know, based off where we were at, but he held my hand like in a firm way, like we're walking together as brothers. And I was like, Western society has like perverted almost every kind of way to express love, you know, like say in other countries, some people are touchy feely, like they like to touch you, they like to embrace you like you know some places men kiss each other on the cheek you know and a stranger will see a kid and be like come here and give the kid a kiss and now here he'll be like hey what are you doing you know <laughs> right <laughs> so and i was like i remember i went to uh, i was working at a place and the lady uh she was uh latino and she met me for the first time and she kissed me on the cheek and i was just like what like what's going on but I recognize like people are okay with freely expressing love in in certain cultures. And it's not that, you know, they're trying to hit on you or anything like that or invading your personal space. So I talk about like things like that in the book, as well as uh, self-love, which is very important. And I say that, you know, the golden rule in life is to treat others how you treat yourself. But the first thing I would like to would like people to do is love themselves so you can treat others with love you know now Yeah. usually people treat other people uh um in a way that they see like it's like a reflection of themselves and other people so if somebody is usually happy and they love themselves they're full of joy they're going to treat you the same way you know and so and then with that i've learned not to take things personal when people treat you with some kind of way is more so something inside of them You know, Right. and self-love is what drives people to be successful, to work hard. You know, like there's nothing that'll get a woman or, you know, let's say a mother, a mother up at night to take care of a, a something that's screaming, you know, every two to three hours. You know what I mean? Like, and I tell people like, you can't even prepare for having kids. It's like, as soon as they're there, you have to just, you know, like nothing's going to prepare you to wake up to a, a child screaming and you change them and, you know, feed them and then you can go back to sleep for two hours and get up. Like, you, Yeah. you know, so it's like all of that is love. And then with honor, it's more so uh, like respectable. You know, I grew up in the streets of L.A. and it was gang infested and gangland and all of these, you know, crime, violence and all of this stuff. And I learned that if you move with honor, you know, amongst those, you know, people that are a part of that life, you'll get ahead, you know, and if you're not the Sure. aggressor and if you don't, you know, push people to that point, if you're respectable, you know, people out here, it's like, it's still, you know, politics when it comes to that type of lifestyle. But if you're an honorable person, you could make it a long way, you know, in everything that you do and including your life. And then honor discipline is very important when it comes to any type of success that you want. And, you know, I, I would say like, you know, it's easy for me to put motivation in there, but I think the motivation is BS. You know, I feel like discipline is what's Yeah. going to get you far. And I tell people, you know, I'm a physical uh, fitness type of guy. And they're like, what more? I'm, like, I'm not motivated to go to the gym. I tell, I push myself to go to the gym. Like, I don't, you think I want to go inside of a, a, a building full of people sweating and, you know, working out for an hour and a half, you know, like, no, you're never going to be motivated to do that. You could, you could, I'd rather do something else, but I have the discipline in me to go there and perform, you know, and I talk about how, um, you know, Kobe Bryant and how he was very disciplined. And then at the end, I talk about how your de discipline could also be your detriment in a kind of way if you're not careful. So with everything, Yeah. Sure. I kind of like, you know, I have like the the good side to it. And then at the end, the bad, you know, not the bad side, but like a, you know, Cautionary like, if you, tale. yeah, you know, Yeah. like something of that sort. Um, And then love, honor, discipline. Golly, love, honor, discipline. Strength. <laughs> I'm sorry. So strength, right? I Strength. totally get it. Yeah. So I'm about 
you know, growing up, I talk about how I just love um, wrestling and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all of these different strong guys. And right. I wanted to be strong. So I started working out at a very young age, you know, in high school, like I was always pretty fit, you know, like no one ever could remember a time where I was not a fit person ever in my life. I can't even joke about that. And uh, with that, I've also mentioned how mental strength is also very important for you to be able to like, you know, go through your life. And that's the most important because somebody that's mentally strong could overpower somebody that's physically strong, you know, with no problem at all. Both are important, you know, not, you know, not, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm not saying you have to be the strongest guy in the room, but you know, you ought to have a, a little something, you know, like a strong mind, strong body. And that's something that I also uh, teach my kids. I'm like, in order for your body to be strong, you also have to have a strong mind and vice versa. You know right. what I mean? And yeah. um, and then wisdom. <sighs> yeah, wisdom is pretty deep because I go through scenarios in my life where if I didn't listen to wisdom, I probably could have been dead or been in a bad situation, you know, right. because you have to listen to your you know, the, the wise person in, in your mind that tells you, oh no, you need to, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that, or you can't do this, or you can't do that, you know? And yeah. I often, uh, and I also give, I'm not trying to give away like too much in the book because it's, it's pretty short. So I'm trying to like, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, cause I'm like, if I talk about it, why would people read it like that? Oh, but, heck yeah, um, they'll still read it. Cause they'll still learn a whole lot. Absolutely. Right, 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 right. And so uh, with wisdom, I just go through like, you know, how it's best for uh, you to use wisdom throughout your life. And wisdom comes with time, experiences, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, and basically time, like, and yeah, time and experiences. That's how wisdom comes to you. And yeah. also listening to your intuition and your higher self. Authors, are you tired of feeling like you're on a never-ending hamster wheel, working hard but never really moving forward? It's time to break that cycle for good. I'm thrilled to invite you to my upcoming free webinar, The Breakthrough Moment. In this transformative session, I'll guide you through the process of releasing the resistance that's been keeping you stuck so you can finally align with the success and abundance that's been just out of reach. If you're ready to stop spinning your wheels and start making real progress, this is your moment. Don't miss out. Head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash breakthrough now to reserve your spot. Let's make this your breakthrough year. I love that. Yeah. 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 I think that's so, that's so key. Having that, like that holistic view of the world of yourself, of like mm -hmm. what you get to have and how you get to move through this space. Because I think so many of us compartmentalize aspects of our lives, whether it be just like meditation, just physicality, that we don't really think about the integration of it all. And I, it, yeah. I think that is so important when it comes to success and, and becoming ultimately what we're going to become or what we need to become, right? 1000%. And I tell people self-care is a full-time job. Like, <laughs> right. oh my God, yeah. it is, it's a lot of work. You know, it's yeah. like, you can't, you almost have to cut off you know, any, you know, like a lot of stuff in order to have self-care. Cause it's like, man, you know, especially if you're a man or, you know, somebody that's in a position to lead, it's like, you have to learn things that, cause you know, things are happening at a rapid pace. You have to be strong. You have to, you know, be healthy. You have to cook your food. You know, you gotta, you know, right. learn about finance. It's like, it's just too much that you have to, uh, embrace in order to be successful for you to like entertain any type of foolishness at all <laughs> right time, you know yeah 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 I completely understand that we're trying to teach that to the teenagers right now it doesn't always hit right <laughs> they're like right. oh, <laughs> why <laughs> oh yeah yeah I tell yeah. my daughter that too I'm like you could be researching something that could make you a millionaire like but you're right. spending all this time playing Fortnite and Roblox <laughs> yes like, you could start a you could start an online business and be rich at your age. Dude, you, like, could, you could create a store inside like Roblox or Fortnite and be rich. You could do on. something. Yeah. yeah, something. So yeah, I'm I'm with it. But it's like, you know, when there's no necessity, then it's like, 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. they can't figure out, but I, I think I have to create a necessity in order to create the willpower, you know, like, right. Oh, you want to go here? Oh, that sounds good. Start an online business. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Right. You no, know? Think yeah, about three different ways you could make money this weekend. Go. <laughs> no, that's exactly that's now that's what that's a takeaway from this uh from this from this show for sure. Because my dad did that to me, you know, it was like sure. oh, if you want to figure it out, you know, but that creates yeah. creativity, willpower, and oh, you know, so does. like you know, discipline. It's like, man, I was a young kid selling candy at school, making uh, you know, quite a bit of money, you know. Buy right? my own school clothes, but it's not that he he probably you know I mean more than likely they couldn't afford to buy me the clothes that I wanted you know but I had to make a way if I wanted it. But yeah. these kids nowadays it's just like I don't even think they care about dressing nice anymore. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's definitely a few of them. Like you've got the we have six kids total. Uh, now there's only three in the house. But like we've had kids what? that don't care at all, right? It's crazy. Hold on. Yeah. He, whoa, 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 whoa. I did not, <laughs> I didn't even think you were a mother. You had six kids? We have six kids. Yeah. So my husband has four, I have two, and then we have one together. So technically, one of his four is mine as well. So there's six kids total. My oldest wow. is 18. And he's he's one of the I don't care about clothes at all, like nothing. But if you give him a goal, like he wanted to get his computer or his car, then he's off and running. He's doing it. My daughter, yeah. on the other hand, she likes to dress nice, but she wants it all taken care of for her. And it's like we're trying to teach her, you know, like these things you have to pay for. And it doesn't always go over well. She's 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's always like we're the we're the evil ones because we're trying to make her come up with ways to do these things. It's always <laughs> It's always interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's good to hear. Oh, my God. I thought I was because it's, you know, it's rare to find uh, other parents. You know what I'm saying? And you look young, too. So I wouldn't even <laughs> well, think that. You. So do you. you no. Know, thank you. Thank you. My kids for sure aren't eight, nowhere near 18. But hey. <laughs> right? I can't believe that's even. And I was old. I was 26 when I had them. So it's crazy. It's I can't believe it's already been that long. Wow. So it's wild. Yeah, it's wow, it, yeah, it goes really fast. Turning Eleven in a couple months, but it'll Oof. go fast. Yeah, go and fast. they all have, and I have four kids, and they all have totally different personalities, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy, you know. But yeah, yeah, and then also writing the book was like something good because I'm like, you know, I've, I've been witnessing a lot of deaths um, within my community, you know, even you know, at my older, at my old age, well, not old age, but middle age. <laughs> and um, I think you I might just like, call me old because something. of that. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm like, I want to leave something behind for my kids, you know, yeah. and for something for them to be like, okay, you know, your grandfather or your dad or your uncle or something just wrote a book, you know what I mean? And I, and I yeah. also want to do more because it's like, I created a movement thoughts that I have like behind, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's so good. Okay. So when you were writing your book, I mean, obviously all of the authors who are listening, they know how difficult writing books are and like getting everything mm -hmm. done. Was there any like specific challenge that you faced while you were writing it? Like, was it difficult? Did it come easy? Or did you apply some of the militant grind pillars to overcome the challenges? Um, The only hard part was me um, like letting it be probably, you know, because mm -hmm. I'll always because, you know, I was like, man, once you put it out there, there's no going back, you know, like you don't want to make yourself look that look like this or look like that. You know, like if sure. you come out with it, it has to be on point. So I would like I would read every single line, you know, like in detail, because I'm the you know, I'm the type of person where it's like whatever I read, I want it to be impactful from the jump. You know, right. I don't want to read any fluff. And that's what irritates me to my core when it comes to certain books, it's like, come on, man. Like you're just putting this in here to make the book long. Like this means right? absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you like short emails to the point, don't you? Yeah. Like yeah, that's, what, me that's too. what I'm about. Like, I'm yeah. not like, I'm not trying to read like, you know, like say I'm reading a book and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot read anything ever from this author, author because it's like, you're saying remedial stuff that, you know, that doesn't need to be in there just to make your book long, just to say you wrote a book. So mm -hmm. with my book, I was like, every single line in there has to mean something and be impactful to the reader, you know? And with that strategy, which is like, okay, I got to write this book for me as well as 
for the audience. So, you know, I wrote it for me, but then I had somebody read it and they were like, you know, a lot of people that's going to read this book isn't going to be college educated and super smart. So you might have to dumb it down a little bit. And I was oh like, oh, gosh. right. You know, like, because I have, a, you know, I have two bookshelves in my house. I have books all on my desk everywhere, you know, and I have audio books. So I'm a, like an avid readers, but I had to step back and think about the audience. So I was like, okay, I'm going to rewrite it again. I'm going to input this scenario. I'm going to do this. Okay. This needs to get out there. Okay. I could put this in there, you know, and I felt like I was just too critical to a point where I was just like, you know, and the, and the, the publisher was just like waiting on me like, Hey man, come on, you know, what's going on. And I was like, you know what, man, I'm going to just send this to him. Like, I'm done. You know, you it could was have just, had was... two different variations. You could have had like the step two, if you're like, get it, if you understand. And then the the like entry level version where you're like really softening the like oh, high high level overview of everything. You know what I mean? You could have had two. Yeah. What are you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> volume one and volume. Two. Yeah, I could have yeah. did something like that. That is true, though. That is true. I'm probably going to. um you know, take notice of that. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm also writing like two more books too. I just have to like, you know, actually set the time and, and write because I'm like, you know, with the way publishing is now it's effortless. So you should be able to write at least every Sunday just to get some thoughts out there. And I have a friend that's, uh, he actually wrote a book and he's injured. He can't work out or do anything. Right. And I was just like, Oh, well, I guess you could just write another book now, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so it was like, you know, it's like, it's, you just have to take the time to actually do it and, you know, not Find be that too discipline, hard on yourself. Right? Huh? Find that discipline, right? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There definitely. you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I had to use um, all of the pillars for the book, like for sure, yeah. you know, and, I, and I'm actually just so surprised at the um the reactions I get from it you know like I'm just like wow people really love it and, and I'll read like a, a review and I'm like because you know sometimes people leave a review because they know you and they favor you but there's sure. this one review that I read and I'm like who the hell is this person you know because I'm yeah. just like promoting it within my circle you know but this review is kind of like somebody I have no clue who it is and I posted it up thinking that somebody would say something but I was just like, wow, man, I'm just so glad that, you know, the energy that I put into this could resonate with other individuals in this kind of way. You know, people saying it changed my life. It helped me through a dark time. You know, okay. I'm seeing life differently. And I'm just like, wow, man, like, look at the power of your thoughts and what it could actually do for people. You know, and that's the most rewarding thing ever is to hear. And actually, it's crazy because I have a, a podcast where my friend was hosting my podcast, interviewing me in person. And, okay. you know, he was an elderly guy. He's 50, you know, from Oregon. And he was just like, man, I, I was going through a dark time and I was reading your book. And, you know, man, I'm, I'm trying not to cry, but it, it really hit me. You know, it really helped yeah. me out in my dark time. And I'm looking like, what? Are you serious? You know, but. It, it happens that way, you know? Yeah. The right yeah. things come into your life at the right times. Like when, when you're ready, the teacher comes, you happen to be the teacher. Right. Right. Oh, so good. Yeah. And we all could be teachers with what we're gifted at and with what we know, you know? And that's one right. thing that a lot of people don't understand is like, you don't have to be, you know, a millionaire or have a, you know, a Lamborghini in a front yard in order to teach somebody something. Like we right. all mastered some things, but some people, they just don't know how to exploit it, you know, for monetary gains. And some people don't want to exploit things for monetary gain. You yeah. know, I know some people that are fan phenomenal singers and artists, and they're just like, you know what, man, I just want to play music and live my life. And I don't want to be traveling around the world and have to go through all that. I'd just rather pay out local shows and you know, do my thing and that's okay. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone has their own version of what the perfect life gets to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So and, I, and I've come to respect that because as an entrepreneur, you know, it's like you think about ways where you could exploit, you know, make money and take advantage. And I'm now I'm just like, you know what? People could be okay with just like, you know, living a simple life, just doing what they love and they don't have to mm -hmm. be rich for somebody to say that they know what they're doing you know like yeah. and that's where i think that's where like you know a lot of us get 
especially in American society, we think that if you're not rich, you must not be doing something right. Right. Yeah, I completely Yeah. agree with you. And I think a lot of us also think, especially from the like the author spectrum, we all think that like you can't even earn a living anyway from your writing. So why bother? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So there's always like such a weird, I don't know, energy or juxtaposition between like we want it to be successful, but we don't think we can get it successful. You know, like it's like we're constantly in this tug of war. And because of that capitalistic society mentality, We're constantly pushing ourselves to to get it to do something that maybe we don't actually even at our core want, Right. you know? Yeah. 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 And it's our limiting beliefs, you know, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's our limiting beliefs that tell us that because, you know, I remember putting out a post uh, years ago saying I want to be an author and somebody was like, just start right, just do it, you know, and people used Yeah. to always tell me you should write a book because and even my dad used to like make fun of me about how I would write things on Facebook and he'll be like, how does your mind even come up with all that because i'm just like doo, 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 you know and i'm writing a paragraph just you know off the top of my head and people were just like wow you know and i Have you gone I have through like and like a lot pulled of all those together and created a book based off of that? Hey there, authors. Are you ready for a unique writing challenge? I'd love for you to enter our Hits Different Short Story Awards for a chance to win first, second, or third place prizes. But here's the twist. You've got to meditate to get your short story idea before you write it. Once you've received your hit, feel free to create your masterpiece. Head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash hits different to learn more and sign up. Unleash your creativity and let your story hit different. Yeah, that's what I, I actually thought about that today because I went through, uh, you know, Facebook they have on this day, you know, Yeah. Yep. and you can see the things that you saw. I'm like, wow, I was a pretty deep thinker. 10, 12 years ago, you know, Right. and maybe I could pull some of those ideas and come up with, you know, some type of book. And, you know, one, I have another book coming out, out called No More Pain. And it's just basically about how, you know, a lot of people that I grew up with in the inner city was going through a lot of pain from the crack epidemic, you know, that happened in Los Angeles. So it's a lot of broken homes, a lot of families, you know, broken and, You know, it was it's, it's just, it was just crazy, and I've realized like how many people that I grew up with had to harness this pain as a child, and you know, not even be vulnerable enough to tell anybody about it. And now that I'm older, I'm recognizing that a lot of you know now my you know we're grown men now, so a lot of my closest friends started telling me about their life, and I was just like, wow, man, like I would have had no idea you were going through stuff like that. You know, Oh, yeah. like it was, it's pretty intense. And it's like, you know, and they're, they have children now, like their parents. And I feel like when people become a parent, they start to look at life differently because it's like, wow, I was a child and I have to raise my child in the way that I was raised, but I don't want to do that. So I'm looking at life from like a different point of view so I can Right. change my mind and raise my child in a whole different way. And I've witnessed like countless, including my siblings, countless amount of parents do that you know Yeah. they reflect on their childhood more and their in and, and their pain and their trauma so they could be like i can't imagine how a man could just not take care of his child or i can't imagine how somebody could say this to their child i would never do that to my child but that was done to me and it's like a conflict you know and i've been the witness of that so many different times and i'm like i want to write about this to help out you know, people in general that has been through like a lot of traumas and a lot of pain. And it's, all you know, it's, it's the overwhelming majority of people in the United States, you know, it's Oh, kind yeah. of, <laughs> yeah, because Yeah. my podcast is about mental health and I'm like, ooh, we trauma doesn't have a color. It doesn't have a, a social class. It doesn't have a type, man. You have no idea what somebody went through, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think Yeah. sometimes, too, I think, like, when we look at, like, generational, like, trauma and we see how it evolves and how it evolves that that specific generation... even though it sucks at the time, even though it sucks when you're in it and you're a kid and it shouldn't happen, it's like it builds a certain part of your character that allows you to look at your perspectives so differently. Like, And to be able to take yourself back and go, you know, do I want to continue this? Not really. Do I want to create a different lifestyle? 
then I can, but how do I do it? Well, I have to think different thoughts or I have to act and behave differently than right. my parents did. So what would I have wanted, you know, back then versus what I actually had? And, and then how do I behave in that manner? And so it's like, I think a lot of us, because of that, we are a bit more reflective over how we want to show up in the world, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's something I definitely want to do just to give back and just to help people because, man, I, I, you know, I've heard some traumatic stories, you know, where people mm -hmm. have good hearts, but then it's like, you know, they can't help what they've been through. They can't help that they were treated this way, you know? Right, right. Yeah, and it's pretty, you know, it's intense, but I'm just like, since I'm, I'm the type of person, it's weird, though, because it's like people come up to me and they tell, like, even strangers, and they start talking about personal things in their life like i've always been like that and I, i'm not just like why are you even you know but then if somebody was like there's something about you that mm -hmm. makes them feel free enough to just start telling you these things you know it's a higher uh, vibration what they say that when you have a higher vibration where it's closer to that element of love people mm -hmm. can feel that and so they feel secure and safe in that space being able yeah. to explain it and hand it over and and share it so yeah, yeah. i can see that yeah, yeah. You know, I man, you know, it's people I'm like, oh she's like, you know, like I know how to take it now because I'm like, man, I, I've heard it all, you know. Right. Like, yeah, right. like it started when I was a teenager, you know, like girls I would I would be dating would tell me that they were sexually molested and you know, all of these different things. And I'm just like, oh my God. But then I had to learn how to embrace, you know, what people tell me. Like I'm not surprised anymore, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah it's I, almost like you just man. you're there as that um soft soft spot to land but then you can change it you can transmute it and kind of let it go let that help them let it go yeah. You know? yeah yeah and that's what i had to learn to do because it's not that you know it's too heavy for me it's more so like i'm gonna listen and i'm gonna help you understand it from a different perspective you know like one of my friends just got caught up with a case where a woman you know, said that he he raped her, you know, because she was upset at him because he had a girlfriend or some other some stuff like that. And then just like recently, he told me that, you know, they dropped the charges, you know what I'm saying? But when he talked to me, I talked to him from a place where like, man, you got to be strong. You don't know where, you know, what's going to happen. She doesn't have anything on you anyway. You know, like, you know that you did not do this. So you have to, you know, your thoughts have to be strong you know what i'm saying and i felt right. like since i told him that and i also feel like thoughts are powerful too because it could go inside of the universe and then like bad things could happen based off of how you respond to a situation For you know sure. so if he was panicking if he was you know oh man f that i do what she trying to do you know what i mean and you know yeah. start to be filled with hate rage and all of these different things you know who knows what would have happened you right. know, but if you take it where it's like, look, man, this happened. I'm going to embrace it. I know I'm not guilty. I know I, I didn't do this stuff. The universe was like, you know what, man, I'm going to just pull him out of this. Boom. You know what I'm I saying? Agree. And he was yeah. like, I don't even know why I'm talking to you about this, but I told my girl, like, we always have these conversations, et cetera. And I was just like, you know, maybe, maybe it was just meant to be, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, who would want to tell anybody that they, you know, got picked up on a rape? But like, nobody wants to tell any human being that, you know, that's one of the worst things you could ever go to jail for, you know? But yeah, yeah you know, that's, that's just an example, but yeah, that's, that's how it happens. But I'm just so glad that like the charges were dropped and it didn't go, you know, it didn't, they didn't go through with it, et cetera. But I felt like because he was internally such a good person and the way he came about it and the way he thought about it, you know, and the way he harnessed it, it kind of was like, okay, no, I'm not going to let this go. I mean, let this yeah. happen, you know? Yeah. I so agree yeah. because when your, your, your thoughts are powerful and, like from a manifestational standpoint, um, Abraham Hicks talks about like our desires being a stick. And so on one side of the stick, it's, our, you know, what we want, the desire we yeah. want, the desired outcome. The other end of the stick is the absence of it. And where we're focusing on like all the things that could go wrong, yet what you're doing is kind of activating that in the universe, that energy, that thing saying, here, bring this thing to me that I don't want because you're mm -hmm. so focused on it. Where if you switch your mindset and you're thinking more about like how you want this outcome to actually be trusting and knowing in yourself that you didn't do this thing or that you can do this thing or whatever, then all of a sudden you're activating not only law of attraction, but law of assumption 
letting the universe know, like I'm moving in this direction. This is how it's going to work. And so right. I really do think that the universe conspires to help us create that version. Like it's, it's so open. It's willing to help us create things that we don't want if that's, you know, where our mindset's going to go. But if we think about the things we do want, the outcomes we really need, it gives us that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. And I also, I'm a big fan of Abraham Hicks, but it's just like, man, every single thought that comes out of your mind is like critical to your, like your well being. But I do know, I do have to embrace duality sometimes. But then it's just like, you know, the higher self has to win. Cause I'm not going to lie, like I switch from my lower self to my higher self all the time. You know, I know that that's there, you know, but I feel like oh, yeah. your lower self. It's like there to protect you from certain things, you know, so you have to be a little inquisitive about certain stuff and not be too vulnerable, not be too, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what is that? I'm trying to think about that word. Just don't be gullible, you know, basically, you know what I mean? And it's sure. easy to be gullible when you're going through life with love and understanding and compassion and you could be taken advantage of and all of these different things. So it's like, you know, you have to have something in place, like a structure, which I, I prefer the five pillars of the military grind to keep you grounded, you know? Yeah. 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 I think that makes total sense too. I mean, we're always, we're human, right? We're always going to have contrast coming into our lives and we're always going to have to sift through it and try to figure out what it, what does it get to mean for us? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's, you know, I think you're right. The, the pillars that you've built, it, it puts your mindset back into place. Like if you then take yourself out of like whatever the chaos is in that moment and go, okay, well using the pillars, how can I create this in my mind in a better, stronger way? Now, all of a sudden you have a place to springboard from that isn't going to spiral downhill. And it's not necessarily going to put you in a place of being gullible either. It, it puts you in a very grounded mindset right yeah. yeah definitely and you know i'm a tourist so being grounded is like all that i'm about <laughs> you know to be so yeah. yeah that's that's my sign but it's like you know we often need something to reflect to that could you know give us a, a foundation and that's what i also talk about that um in the intro it's like we need a foundation that we could go back to no matter what it is, if it's religion, if it's spirituality, you know, something I'll be like, okay, what, what are my basics, you know? And yeah. so that's what I provide as a starting point inside of the book. It's like, okay, here's a few basics you could start with, you know, remix it as you want, do what you want with them, apply that with, apply them as you want. But then on top of that, I give real life examples that people could relate to and also personal examples uh, from my life, you know, that I put out there as well to make it more human, you know, like I'm not just right. writing about other people and people that I've observed. It's more so like, no, I'm going to tell you about some times where I almost had a conflict where I, you know, messed up or when I did this or when I did that, you know, and I feel like uh, when you come about it like that as an author, I feel like the reader has a, a different type of respect for you because it's like, wow, like I'm getting to know you. You're not just writing yeah. about somebody else or an experience that you heard of, you know? So right. my style of writing is like, I want to give you my perspective, you know, mm -hmm. like what I feel, what I think. And I don't want to write it as like a research paper, you know, like, right. <laughs> well, in this, you know, this and this, I mean, I cite the Bible and things like that just to, you know, have some type of common ground, but, you know, I, I, I love to write it's like, okay, I'm talking to you as a friend, you know, I'm giving you my opinion. You may not agree, but this is just what I think, you know? Yeah. 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 So I, I know a lot of authors deal with a lot of self-doubt. Does the militant grind address like self-doubt and like, do you have any personal experiences where like when you were writing or in anything that you've been doing that you're trying to utilize the pillars to get over any kind of form of um, self-doubt? That will have to be strength and discipline because discipline will make you do it no matter what and just follow through with it. Even if mm -hmm. you do doubt yourself, sure. you know, like, yeah, I mean, you could, I feel like you do not everyone doubts themselves, period. You know, well, I, I mean, I really, I don't. But if you do, you know, you can use discipline to keep you going, you know, like strength, mental strength to keep yeah. you going, self-love to keep you going, you know, 
Okay. honor to keep you going it's like a lot of i feel like every single pillar you could use to keep you going you know because it's like you know what i know i'm not feeling this right now but i told i made a commitment to myself that at 12 o'clock i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna write this book and i'm gonna just go through my thoughts and i tell people it's not that you know it's not really how you feel before Because when you actually like sit down and you start and then you do something, you will be, you will get in the flow, you oh, know, yeah. no matter what, yeah, yeah. like say, you know, going to the gym, sometimes I don't feel like it, but when I start, when I start and I'm going, I'm like, okay, I'm in here now. You know what I mean? And sometimes we have to yeah. get over the hump period, you know? And so that comes with mental strength. It's like, no matter what. You know, you're not going to control my feelings. Don't control me. I control me. So I'm going to put yeah. myself through this. I'm going to give it all that I got. And I'm going to just keep going. You know, yeah. if you do have self-doubt, you know, because sometimes it's not self-doubt. It's more so like how you feel inside that's stopping you, you know, and, and either, you know, it can be self-doubt, of, of course. But it's like, what is it that what's going on inside of you that's making you want to doubt yourself, making you want to stop? Maybe you don't love yourself enough, you right. know, to give yourself right. the the courage and the influence. So maybe you need to read the first pillar about self-love to get that confidence, because if you love yourself, you could you have the confidence and the wherewithal to think that you could do anything, you know? Yeah. 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 And I feel like that's really because it's like, say some of the men, you know, that were boxers. I, I give an example of Muhammad Ali. He said, I'm the greatest fighter in the world, you know, before he even won the title, yep. you know, and people hate cocky people or people that <laughs> so or some people that love themselves, you know, like the greatest people. They knew that they were great. They love yeah. themselves so much that they embrace greatness. But then when they, you know, talk about it, I'm like, hell shit. I mean, they have proof. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. then when they proclaim it, it's like, oh, they're this, oh, they're that. And I used to think about it like, man, I love cocky people. I love that. You know, right. I love people that are sure about themselves. Those are the people who I want to follow. Like, I think I, it's I because put, a lot of people are scared of that power in themselves. Like they know they have it. They just haven't embraced it. And so because they haven't embraced it, it's easier to point the finger at those who have. Right. Come on. Easy. Because it's like, why don't you just find something that you're great right? at and you proclaim it? You could say, man, don't nobody bake cookies better than me. Right. I love you know that. What I'm saying? Your cookies ain't mess with mine. Here, try it. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> these cookies are delicious. Oh, my God. Right. You know? Yeah. And there's like there's all kind of things where people could actually like say that. And it makes sense. You know, like, yeah. man, I'm the greatest at this. I feel like I'm the greatest at that. And you may, there may be somebody better than you. Okay, cool. But at the end of the day, if you're believing that and you're putting your energy into that, then something has to come out of it. Right. You know? And yeah. I like, I'm telling you, like, as a kid, I loved people that were sure of themselves, that were cocky, so called, you know, that was like, I, I just loved it. Like Michael Jordan and Muhammad Ali and um, who else? Uh, Mike Tyson was one of my favorites. You know, he just knew that he was going to go in there and knock somebody out. You know what I mean? But right. I, I just love seeing champions and loved how champions think. And I feel like that is what resonated, you know, in me so much. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like they love themselves so much that they proclaim their destiny, you know, and I feel like that that was that's just powerful. You know, it is. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. it's that decision point where it's like, no, no one's going to deter them from it. Like this, right. is, this is how it is. Yeah. 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 And Kobe was a Kobe Bryant was the same way. Like, you know, he, he messed up his first game. And after the game, he went in the um, he went to a local high school in L.A. Palisades and he just started shooting in the in the locker room, you know, for hours. Mm -hmm. He was just like, no, nah, I'm not going to let myself down like that. I love myself too much to let myself down like that. Right. Because it all starts with love. Right. And I think I think that ties back to like um, the idea of promotion and, and you know, self-promotion or marketing or whatever, because mm -hmm. so many authors have a, you know, such a hard time. They love the writing part of it. They love the publishing part of it. But when it comes to the self-promotion part of it, now they're getting hung up. And so it's like I think that pillar is probably the same then. Right. Self-love. Would you agree that you yeah. have to love your story, love your words, love what you do and love your readers, I suppose? To be able mm -hmm. to then be authentic 
Yeah. Do you have any other well, advice on like strategies about marketing when it comes to the pillars? Marketing is kind of, well, cause it's like you have, I mean, you, you really have to be confident enough to, um, cause that's kind of fun. Cause I like, say with me, right. I'm just so confident in the book that, you know, it's in the store now, you know, people actually purchased it inside of a store and they'll send pictures of me like, Hey man, cause it's in the, the store that it is in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And people would be like, man, I've seen your book in here, man. Wow. You know, I've seen this, I've seen that. And I'm just like, you know, I had the com enough confidence to contact them and say, Hey, I want to put my book in your store. You know what I mean? Like, or just put it out there. Like, Hey, you know, somebody's like, Hey man, where can I buy your book? You know, where can right. I buy your book? Because of the way I talk about it, the way other people talk about it. You know what I mean? But if you really put your all into it, you should be able to promote it effortlessly to other people, you right. know, or even like give it to somebody for free just so they could read it and be like, hey, just let me know what you think about it. You know what I'm saying? So I've had enough feedback and enough confidence in myself to say, you know what, I'm going to promote this on everything that I do. I'm going to talk about it because I know that people are receiving it in a great way. And how dare I hold that back when I know that there were people that, you know, were motivated, inspired that, you know, it changed their life and it changed their thought patterns. Like I would be a selfish person to not even talk about, you know, this book to other people or put it out okay. there to the world. That is so good. I, I so agree with you. And it's, it, it, it to me it does though it ties back to that love because you love that book and you know that the words are going to resonate so well with the people who are going to you know pick up the book to be able to understand the pillars to be able to get into that mindset shift and mm -hmm. you know whether you're in fiction or whether you're in nonfiction there's always something some element that needs to get to the readers that's going to help them you know even if it's just entertaining them for a little bit or even if it's just showing them you know a, a story that is going to put what they're going through in a better light or different light. It just, I think every time we're writing something, it just has such an impact on readers that mm -hmm. authors forget that power sometimes. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, take you out of it. You know, it's not about you. It's about you impacting others, depending on like, you know, what, what you're, you know, what you write about. Cause it could be a cookbook and you can be like, oh, you should follow these recipes. I'm a great cook. I love cooking. I feel like this will be great for you. You know, and yeah, you should check it out. Somebody will be like, oh, OK, yeah, I'm a I'm a you know, I see you're passionate about it. You actually love it. I could see you love to cook. So why wouldn't I pick that book up? You know, but I'm not going to pick up a book of somebody saying, you know, hey, I wrote a cookbook. You should buy it. And I'm doing it for money. And I'm not like passionate about it. Like, say I yeah. have uh, interviews with a lot of authors, you know, and one author, I was like, man, I have to get this guy's book because I know that based off of me talking to him, I know that he put some real information inside of this book, you know, and there were people where I was yeah. a guest of their podcast and they read it and they were like, Oh my God, I, I love it. You know, but I'm just like, wow, think about like how much it takes for anybody to just go on a website, purchase something with your name on it, take the time to read it. You know what I mean? Like, what is it about you that made them want to just, make that move you know what i mean so it's like right. yeah you have to really you know be about it and embrace it and just like you know like really put it on the line because you know you put it on the line for it to come into fruition yeah 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 i totally agree oh and it's it's so powerful when you can embrace that part of your journey as well like to be able to get over like you said get over yourself into the point of like realizing that this that this is bigger than who you are. It's meant to be impacting others and to get it out there and just to, to trust that the right people are going to find it. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 And now I'll like, I tell, I tell somebody this, uh, this past weekend, I was like, if you take yourself out of things, like it's really easy to be motivated and inspired to just do things, you know? Cause it's like, say, um, they're like, oh man, how do you stay motivated to be in the gym? I'm like, okay, so let me think about this. I have a two-year-old at, you know, I'm about to be 38. So I want to be able to live long enough for that two-year-old to, you know, if that two-year-old decides to have a child at 38, 
I'm going to be almost 80 years old, you know what I'm saying? Or like, Yeah. whatever. So how am I going to be at 80? And then it's like, I want to be able to see my grandchild, you know, walk and talking, you know, like our, our grandparents were, you know, more than likely at our high school graduations. Right. You know what I mean? Like Yep. everybody, you know, like they were, they became great grandparents. So it's like, you have to be able to take care of yourself so you can live a long, great life that, you know, your, your grandkids and, you know, your kids could be able to have access to you and you could actually do things and be agile. Like it's not about you working out because you want to look a certain way or you eating right. So you want to look a certain way you're doing this. So the people that love you could have you around. could get Right. the best out of you so the world could get the best out of you you know and if you love them like you say you do do right for yourself because Yeah. no son wants to look at his dad with his stomach sticking out you know or like not looking strong like when i grew up i looked at strong men like you know always strong my grandfather looked strong until you know he died at 75 like you would have thought he was always in the gym and i'm like You know, like your sons will end up, you know, even your daughter, daughters will end up looking up to people that aren't you because of how you look. It's like, OK, I'm looking at, let's say, Captain America and, you know, he's a hero and I'm looking at my dad and my dad is 250 pounds and Captain America is looking like this. Right. You know Right. what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you really have to think about that. And my friend that I uh, work out with, he's like, man, your kids got to look at you like a superhero, you know, keep going, keep. And that's how he motivates me to keep working out. Sure. And it's the truth. It's like my kids embrace me like I'm their hero. Like, daddy, pick me up. Daddy, look, I'm strrong, too. Daddy, look, I'm working out as well. You know, and when I take myself out of it, it's it's just more easier to be consistent and more dedicated to my health. And that's actually the example that I had growing up. Like if I showed you a picture of my parents, you'll be like, what? Those are your parents? Like, yeah, because they work out, they exercise, they take care of themselves. You know, so this is how it happened. I'm not going to say that every one of my siblings follow the same thing, but it's like, you know, if you had the example growing up, it's on you to, you know, take that or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, and it all feeds back around too, because when you're working out, you're increasing oxygen levels to the brain. Your brain is obviously important. You have bigger, bigger thoughts. You think of new things like it, it all feeds back, especially as authors. Like I've talked about how, you know, drinking enough water and, and working out is so important because of the brain aspect of it. Like you're, you're clearer thinking you are more tuned into the universe. You are like, you're just more capable when you are taking care of your whole system. Right. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And like all of that plays a part, you know, all of it does. And it's like, it's not about you. You know what I mean? It's never Right. about you. It's about everybody else, Yeah. you know, because And you the can connection inspire of it. somebody by, and I, and I tell this story, like say, if I'm at the store, right. And somebody, or like, you know, sitting down at a restaurant and somebody comes in, they don't say a word to me, but they just see me. sitting there looking strong and fit, you know, with the, you know, tight shirt. So you can just see my body and everything like that. And I'm looking healthy and I'm vibrant. That person never says a word to me. Right. But at the end of the day, since they saw me, something sparks in their mind to be like, you know what? I need to get in the gym. I need to start eating healthy. And their life basically changed just by looking at you, you know, Right. and Yeah. we could impact the world, you know, where it's like, it doesn't, you don't have to know, that's your impact in the world. Like somebody doesn't always have to tell you, man, you changed my life. You know, it could be something where it's like that person doesn't know your name. They forgot what you look like. They just, and they probably don't even remember that you inspired them, but I'm sure if, you, if they go back to be like, yeah, I just saw somebody, you know, at the gym and I was like, man, or at the store. And I was like, man, I need to, you know, that, that person's looking good. I need to get all my stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like we can impact the world in such minimal ways by just being the best versions of ourselves. I agree. Yeah. So for, for my listeners who want to like start incorporating the militant grind pillars into their daily lives, where do they start? Like, how do they, how do they begin the implementation process of that? Is it reading the book first? Is it going to your website? Like what, what is the best way to be able to learn I would about definitely it? say uh, reading the book first and using the book as like a reference, you know, Mm. 
And basically, like, after you read the book, it's more so like, okay, how am I going to incorporate this in my life for myself with what I want to do? You know, I'm not the type of person to say, hey, you should do this or you should do that. It's I feel like you should do what you were born to do that you love to do. But just keep these basics in mind while you're doing what you love to do. Right. You know, and some people be like, you know what, man, I'm feeling this kind of way. I want to go read the strength pillar. It'll only take me a couple minutes and I'm just going use that as a reference. Like, OK, yeah, now I'm feeling it. You know, oh, I don't feel like working out today or I don't feel like, you know, uh, doing this. I'm going to read the discipline pillar, you know, and to see how I feel. So I often tell people, you know, you could you could read it and then I'll just be like, OK, what did how does it resonate with you? You know, because a lot of people will say yeah. you have to be like this. You have to be like that. I don't feel like there's a structured way to do certain things. Some things you have to innovate and you just have to do it on your own, you know, and I'm not going to say, oh, if when you read this, you're going to, you know, make money or you're going to be a millionaire. It's like, no, you're just going to feel good inside. And once you do that, you know, fix your spirit, your mind, your body, then all of those other things are going to come. Right. Oh, I so agree with that. Okay, so looking forward, you, you mentioned that you've got a couple of books already in process, but do you foresee the militant grind philosophy evolving or like what are the upcoming projects that you're working on so that my listeners know like, like what to be looking forward to as you're digging through um, all of this? Yeah, um, yeah, it is evolving. I'm a write, um, I, you know, I have a book called No More Pain coming mm -hmm. out. And then also uh, I'm working on something where it's going to be called The True Alpha Male. And cool. I'm going to talk about like how, like what it really means to be alpha male and get over some of the, uh, you know, the misconstrued, you know, like things that people say, you know, like they think they're alpha or they think that this is an alpha. And I'm like, no, I'm going to really let it be known what a true alpha male is, you yeah. know, so people could really decide if they want that heat or not, you know, right. now is this like. When you're saying the heat, are you talking about romance heat? Because all romance authors are all about alpha males. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nah, heat where it's like, you know, because like I say, I had a, uh, I actually have a, a co-host of podca podcast called the Alpha Male Dialogues. And it basically says like, when you're an alpha male, you have to be accountable for everybody and everything. And you have to take everything as if it's your own, you know, it's not yeah. that you lead like, you know, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna tell people what to do. It's like, no, you're accountable for lives. You're accountable for people. And if anything goes astray, you have to be the one to be on the front line. Right. You know, that responsibility more, aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Responsibility aspect. Like if you're an alpha male and I'm thirsty, you have to go get some water or figure out how I could drink some water. You know, you, sure. that's what true leadership, true alpha male is. And I don't feel like there's any levels to it. It's just what it is, you know, because yeah. it's like you have to be the one to trade charge for other people's lives. And I feel like people think that just because you're tough or you could beat somebody up or you could do these things, you're an alpha. It's like, no, that's not what an alpha is at all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If I'm hungry and you're an alpha, you have to figure out a way for me to eat. Sure. Yeah. Or at least lead lead me to a place where I know where to go eat and feed myself from now on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. here's the pantry. Enjoy. <laughs> right. Right. And that's and that's yeah. really what it's about, you know? And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna really put that out there to see. And then to also like tune people up, you sure. know. Cause as I say, yeah. if you know, like I said when I mentioned that people come up to me and they tell me their life stories and things like that. And that's because I have an alpha personality where it's like you know, this guy is respectable. He's, you know, like vibrates with love, you know, and honor and things like that. So I could go ahead and tell him this and I'm sure he wouldn't use it against me. I'm sure he wouldn't put it out there. I'm sure he wouldn't tell people, you know what I mean? But that's what you do when you're, you know, like say if you're in a, a tribe and somebody's an alpha that you go to that person with your troubles, with your worries, you know, hey man, I really need this or I really like, what can I do? You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, so, that's so good. Yeah, that's, I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people. I mean, the, the no more pain is too, but I think, mm -hmm. think both together, like when combined with the pillars, even it's like almost like this triad of things that are really going to help level up people in new ways. That's, right. that's really cool. Do you Thank know when, you. when these are going to be coming out? No, no, hopefully <laughs> so. Not yet. I need, to, okay. I need to start the alpha male like ASAP though. I'm a really like, 
because I'm basically starting a um an experience where me and uh, other men are going to go in the wild and, you know, camp out and, you know, live in nature for a few days. And I want them to have that book, you know? So it's like, I kind of like, man, I want to have that book ready for when I actually do, uh, when I actually do have the retreat. So I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to really get on it, you know, but yeah, I'm not, I don't put it because I, I, because once I do that, you know, I'll put a lot of pressure on myself. I'll be like, you said this day. <laughs> so it has right. to happen, you know? So I don't care yeah. what you got going on. You said this, stick to it. And that's the type of person I am. And maybe yeah. I do need to do that to lot of fire up under my behind, because mm-hmm. trust me, like, right. you know, when there's pressure, like say, you know, I had one guy I was going to do uh, some work for him, right? And usually I don't like taking people's money unless it's complete. But he was just like, no, man, what's your what's your uh, information? And he sent me the money. And I was like, oh, God, I got to do this ASAP. Like, right. I had to stop. Every other night. He sent me the money first. I got to get this done because I'm not going to have anybody bothering me saying, hey, man, I sent you the money, bro. Where is it at? You know, like, yeah, what's going yeah. On? <laughs> you know what I mean? So the way to life fire, that's some, you know, that's a way to pressure me is to say, hey, man, you know, like, and you're not going to put me in a position where you're going to control me, you know, just because you pay me and things like that. So, yeah, I think I really do need to put a date on it now that you you mentioned it. Because trust me, it's been an idea for a while. Yeah, you know, well, that's kind of what happens. It sits and brews for a bit. And then all of a sudden it's like, nope, I've decided today is the day I'm setting a deadline. Let's go. <laughs> that's yeah. how it has to happen. Yep. That is how it has to happen. But I gotta, I'm gonna give myself like a, a couple of weeks. So, but yeah, that's you're, great. You're absolutely right. <laughs> well, and you can, you, you even have, if you've got this podcast, you have like the perfect opportunity to like mine for gold through it. Like if you've had conversations, go through the transcripts. That like, is true. So many, yeah. so many good things that could already be kind of written out for you if you get the transcripts. So that's true. Yeah. Good starting point. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I'm gonna make that happen for sure. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah. I look forward to it. If you do get it up, um, you'll have to let me know. Like, send me a link because I'll share it with my audience too. It'll be awesome. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So where where can my audience go, Sherman, to find you, to find out more about everything that you do, to get your book? Like, where do they go? Militantgrind.com has so absolutely easy. everything. Or you could just Google my name, Sherman Perryman, and all kind of stuff will pop up. But militantgrind.com is like the source for everything that I do. Awesome. Well, and I'm thank also you. on LinkedIn. I'm on everything, you know. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your insights, your wisdom, and obviously talking about militant grind and all that it encompasses. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me and this actually happening. I feel like this has been an amazing conversation. I've learned a lot, you know, so I want to thank you for sharing your insight as well, you know. Well, thank you. I mean, I've definitely yeah. learned a lot. I'm I'm motivated just to like learn more myself i want to get the book i want to be able to dig through it maybe pass it over to my husband (laughs) (laughs) it's all good (laughs) yeah cool cool cool. well thank you you're very welcome wow what an incredible conversation that was with sherman wasn't it i have to say getting to dive into the militant grind philosophy learning about its origins and understanding the heart behind sherman's mission was truly inspiring for me In fact, I've even been on his podcast now a couple of times because speaking with him has just been so profoundly impactful. His dedication to fostering a resilient mind and approaching life's challenges with love and compassion is something we can all take to heart. I hope you found as much value in this discussion as I did. Now, speaking of love, if you've been following me on Instagram or TikTok, you may have noticed that things are starting to shift a little bit in the author revolution world. There's a fresh, transformative energy in the air, and I am fully embracing it. It's like this big alchemist vibe has swept over me, and I'm so excited about the changes that are on the horizon. I'm in the process of revamping the way I offer my courses, with a focus on making an even greater impact on your author journey and your life. I want to ensure that the resources I'm providing aren't just helpful, but they're truly transformational. And here's the thing, if you're not already following me on social media, now is definitely the time to jump on board. You'll get the latest updates, insights, and sneak peeks into all the exciting developments before anyone else, but you're also going to get some new interesting educational posts that I haven't really been digging into until this point. So trust me, you're not going to want to miss what's coming next. 
Speaking of exciting developments, I am thrilled to announce that on August 31st at 1 p.m. Central Time, I'll be hosting a webinar called The Breakthrough Moment. Now, this session is designed especially for authors who have hit their I'm done moment and are ready to alchemize it into the ultimate breakthrough. See what I did there? Alchemize, right? It's going to be a powerful, game changing experience, and I can't wait to share it with you. If this sounds like exactly what you need, you can sign up at authorrevolution.org forward slash breakthrough. Spots are limited, so make sure you reserve your spot. Lastly, if you want to revisit today's episode, get the transcript, or explore the links to Sherman's site and his books, head over to authorrevolution.org forward slash 249. Everything you need will be right there. Thank you so much for joining me and Sherman today. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you, and I can't wait to see where the future takes us. Until then, go forth and start your author revolution.